Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this uh, leave insert higher level functions question. Uh, this is from the 2018 exam, it's question 9. Um, so in engineering, a crank and slider mechanism can be used to change circular motion into motion uh, back and forth in a straight line. So we're given a diagram here of uh, a crank and slider. Um, so in the diagrams below, the crank OD rotates about the fixed point O. Uh, the point C slides back and forth in the horizontal. There's the point C slides back and forth. Point D goes around O. Uh, CD is the rod that connects C to the crank. So CD is the rod that connects C to the crank. Um, the diagrams below show three of the possible positions for C and D. Uh, OD is 10, so that's the radius, uh, and DC, uh, the length of the connecting rod, is 30. So there's a lot of information given uh, at the start of that question. Um, so just maybe take a, a minute to read it over again and make sure you know exactly what's in the question before you tackle any of the, of the parts. So here is part A. Um, the diagram below shows a particular position of the mechanism with uh, the angle DCO equal to 15 degrees. Uh, find the angle o, uh, COD, that'd be COD, this angle here, let's call it X. Find that angle. So for that angle, we're gonna use the sine rule. We have um, an angle and the side opposite. We are looking for this angle and we have the side opposite. When I'm doing the sine rule, I always put the one that I want in the top left. That just makes it easier uh, for calculations. So sine of x over 30 is equal to the sine of 15 over 10. Now all I have to do is multiply across by 30. So sine of x is equal to 30 sine 15 over 10 and I want to find what x is so it's going to be the sine inverse of this stuff here so x is equal to the sine inverse of 30 sine 15 over 10 and we can take that to our calculator and um, make sure that we are in degrees mode so into degrees so I want the inverse sine of 30 sine 15 over 10 close brackets and error so I might have made an error in there somewhere um, forgot a bracket there close the bracket 50.9 degrees so x is equal to 50.9 degrees and it says to the nearest degree so x is approximately equal to 51 degrees okay so let's flick over to uh, the second part so this is part b uh, as d moves around in a circle uh, around o the angle alpha in the diagram below increases the distance cx can be considered to be a function of alpha and written as the f of alpha. Write down the period and range of f. Well, the smallest alpha can be is uh, zero degrees and the biggest it can be is 360 degrees. So that's going to be the, the period of it as well. Um, so it'll go from zero to 360 degrees. Now, usually when we are writing down periods of functions um, and, and we're dealing with angles, we do it in radians. So it's actually going to be 2 pi um, radians rather than 360 degrees. So I think either one would be fine, but I'm going to put it down as the period as 2 pi. Uh, for the range, um, the range now, we just have to reread it here. The distance Cx can be considered to be a function of alpha. So the range of F is the range of distan distances that CX can be. Now the smallest CX could be is when the point D is all the way over here. And that would mean if this is 30, we'd have 30 altogether minus 
to 20, which is the diameter of the circle. So we'd have 10. So it starts at 10, um, and it includes 10, so 10 is included. And the longest CX can be is if point D was down here, and then you'd have the full 30 centimeters out there. So the range is 30, or is 10 to 30. Part two of this uh, asks you to complete the table below for the F of A. Give your answers correct to two decimal places where appropriate. Uh, note diagram one at the start of this question represents alpha equal to zero degrees. Um, so there's a couple of ones in here that are easy enough to figure out and then two of them that uh, will take a little bit of work. Um, so we're looking for the length CX. Well, when, the, when alpha is 180 degrees, that would be all the way over here. Um, so that would mean that we have uh, CD, which is 30, going from here to here. 20 of it is the diameter of the circle, so that leaves 10 left. So there's 10 uh, centimetres at 180 degrees. And then at 360 degrees, that's when D is all the way down here. So CX is obviously going to be 30. So those two are easy enough. Um, for 90 and 270, however, we have to do a little bit of work. So I'll draw maybe a diagram of what we would have. So we'd have a circle. Um, you'd have the rod is straight up like this. You'd have that there. And we're looking for this distance here. Well, I know this is 10. That's the uh, radius of the circle. I know this is 30 because that's the length of the connecting rod. So this is a right angle because that's 90 degrees, it's told, told us there. So we just have to use Pythagoras and that will give us the answer here. Now, we have to bear in mind that this here is 10, so whatever answer we get, we take 10 away and then that will be uh, the remainder. So onto the calculator, um, that's gonna be 30 squared minus 10 squared, which is 800. So we want the root of 800 which is 20 root 2, let's just change it to a decimal, 28.28, uh, that's here to here. Remember, we only want CD, so we're going to take away 10, which is 18.28. For 270, it's actually going to be the same thing as, as well, because this will just be down here. So it'll just be that triangle there flipped up to, upside down. So that's 18.28. Part three then, use your values from the table to draw a rough sketch of F in the domain uh, zero, uh, less than or equal to alpha, less than or equal to 360, or zero to two pi. Now, important thing here is that it actually just says a rough sketch of F. So you don't need to be too artistic in this. Uh, rough sketch will do. So. I would use uh, a ruler for my X and Y axis. Uh, I don't have one handy, so a sketch is all you're gonna get from me. So we'll have there, you'd have zero to 360. You could maybe put in 180 then as well. Uh, and then here, we're gonna have to go up as far as 30. So maybe 10, 20, 30. And we have our points from above, so we have uh, 0, 30, so that would be here. We have 90, 18.28, so that's 90, 18.28. We have 180, 10. We have 270, 18.28, round about there. And we have 360, 30, around about there. So. That's coming down like this and back up like that. Yeah. Over to uh, the next part, final part of this question, uh, part four, referring to diagrams one, two, and three near the start of this question, uh, for which of the three positions of the mechanism will a one degree change in alpha cause the greatest change in the position of C and explain your answer. Okay, so for this I've just got uh, a 
I've got the diagrams here that we can look at them a little bit closer. Now, the answer I'm going to tell you is diagram two, okay? And let me try and explain why. So if we look at the graph here, okay? Um, diagram one is the starting position here. Um, a one degree change is bringing it down a little bit to here. Uh, diagram two um, is less than 90 degrees, it's somewhere here. Um, so there's a bit, it's, it's a bit steeper here. And diagram three is over here near to 180, but maybe just after it, it's here. It's, a, it's maybe not as steep. What, we're only using the diagram here to do it. Now we, we could use uh, calculus to find the rate of change and that would be the, the absolute best way to do it. But the question just says, uh, using your, uh, question says, where'd it go? Uh, referring to diagrams one, two and three near the start of the question, uh, which um, of the three will um, a one degree change cause the greatest change in the position of C. So, I mean, calculus would be the correct way to get um, the absolute answer. But if we just look at the steepness of it here, we're looking at, you know, it's, it's horizontal going to just beyond horizontal here um, before 90. Sorry, that's before 90. So that's actually here. So you have a very steep um, tangent there and here something like that so the steepness of the of the tangent is what you're looking at there so the explanation that you give is um the slope to the tangent to the curve is the steepest And on to part C, uh, the diagram below shows another crank and slider mechanism with different dimensions. In the diagram, AB is 36, AX is 31, and a, uh, BOA, this angle here, is 10. Uh, note OBA, o, B, OBA is not 90 degrees. Uh, find or the length of the crank and give your answer in centimetres correct to the nearest centimetre. Okay, so I'm going to use the cosine rule for this um, because I'm looking for or, I have the angle opposite, I have this side and I have this side in terms of or. This would be 31 plus or. So I can use the cosine rule there and, uh, and work it out. So it'll be or squared is equal to 36 squared um, plus 31 plus or squared uh, minus 2 times 36 times 31 plus or cosine 10 degrees. Okay, so working some things out here, uh, or squared is equal to uh, 36 squared is 1,296. Uh, 31 plus or to be squared. Uh, 31 squared is 961. Uh, twice the product, that would be 31 or times 2 is 62 or. And then or squared. Then this bit here, uh, minus 2 times 36 uh, times 31 is minus 2232. Two, so minus 2232. And then minus 2 times 36 uh, times or is going to be minus 72 or. And just to remember that all of this stuff here is times cos 10 degrees. So make sure you have the brackets proper there. So tidying this up a bit, uh, my 
or squares cancel so that leaves me with uh, 0 uh, equal to this um, I can add 1296 uh, 1296 plus 961 to get 2257 so 0 is equal to 2257 uh, plus 62 or um, minus uh, 2232 2232 cos 10 you can just calculate that out now to get uh, minus 2198.091 let's just take it to three decimal places um, and then minus 72 or cos 10 uh, let's do 72 cos 10 degrees and we'll get 70.91 so that'll be minus 70.91 or so now I have things uh, I have two things with or and I have two numbers there so I can just get ors to one side numbers to the other so uh, let's put the ors on the left hand side so that would be plus 70.91 minus 62 so that's going to be 8 0.906 is equal to uh, 2257 minus 2198 which is 59 I forgot my or over here so or then will be 59 divided by 8.906 which is 6.62 they want to correct to near a centimeter, so or is approximately equal to seven centimeters. Um, so that was probably uh, one of the more difficult examples of the cosine rule, um, because we had this or in here, which came into play here and here. So it just meant that we had things in terms of or. Um, it looked like we were getting a quadratic uh, for a while, but then I noticed that these two or squares you could uh, take or squared from both sides and that just made it a lot simpler and it brought it down to a simple linear equation. Um, the reason why I chose three decimal places here was because it said give your answer to the nearest centimeter. So I knew that if I took it to three decimal places, um, it wouldn't affect the answer correct to the nearest centimeter. I could have taken it probably to to one decimal place and it wouldn't have changed it. I always go to um, a couple extra than I need just to be sure. Okay, so if you have any questions uh, about this uh, exam question, just ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.